our fourth lesson in our Cooking Matters for Kids series. Uh, this month we're going to be talking about um, smart snacking and specifically we're going to focus in on healthy beverages. So um, in our My Plate we'll focus on um, how we can create healthy beverages by adding fresh fruit or vegetables into your drink. It could be a smoothie or it could be done raw. Um, and then we're going to do a taste test um, where we're creating um, kind of our own versions of lemonade and drinks like that, which you can do at home and find ways to cut down the amount of sugar in our drinks while increasing the flavor and nutritional value by getting more vitamins in there. Um, and we're going to look specifically at food labels, how to read them and um, figuring out how much sugar is in the beverages that you're normally drinking so we can cut back on the added sugar that we're putting in our bodies and help ourselves be healthier overall. When we think about this in terms of my plate, of course, the um, more nutrients, the more vitamins and minerals we can get into our body through the beverages that we're drinking, the better, right? Now, probably the healthiest drink that I know of is a smoothie. And the reason for that is because it takes whole fruits and puts them into the drink instead of just the juices, right? If you were making um, a glass of orange juice, you could just take an orange and squeeze all the juice out of it, which has a lot of the sugar in it naturally, but doesn't have all the fiber that comes from eating the whole orange, right? So um, when you are creating smoothies, you can take an entire banana or a bunch of blueberries or strawberries, whatever it might be, and blend the whole thing up and you still get all of the vitamins and minerals out of it, but you also get the fiber that helps with your digestion and keeps you full. And it balances out the way your body uh, uses the energy. When we drink fruit juice, like um, just a glass of apple juice, for example, that energy goes quickly into our system because there's no fiber to slow down the absorption. So that means the juice goes straight to our stomach, it absorbs quickly and we get a big boost of energy, almost like we just ate candy, right? And that energy will last until it all burns off, so our body um, absorbs it. And that will only take maybe a half hour if we are just drinking the juice. If though we eat a whole apple or we drink a smoothie where there's more fiber in there, our body has to take a while to digest um, the fiber that's in those fruits and vegetables. And that means the energy is kind of stretched out over a longer period of time as the food breaks down. So for several hours, as you're digesting that fruit or vegetable, that energy is slowly um, given out to your body to use. So it'll keep you more balanced in your energy and help you stay full longer. So a food label, you can usually see on the side of a can or something, looks kind of like this. But essentially at the top, you'll have a serving size. This one says one and a quarter cup and that there's six in this recipe, right? So you look at how much a serving is. So that means of this would be a little more than uh, eight ounces. It would be like um, 10 ounces in a, a glass would be a serving size of this. Calories are the next thing here. Calories tell us how much energy you're gonna get from the food. Our, our bodies need calories to um, function. They're kind of our unit of energy, kind of like gasoline for a car. This has 220 calories. So that's, that's a decent amount, right? That should keep me going for a little while. It says um, the fat comes next. And we do want fat in our body, right? Fat is not something we should avoid, but we want healthier fats. Usually um, plants have healthier fats than animals. So we want to get most of our plants from things like olive oil and less from butter. Um, sodium is how much salt is in the food. And usually you wanna cut back on your salt. Um, it's helpful as for, for absorbing water. So when you're really active, you need salt in your diet to be able to stay hydrated well. But we wanna avoid too much salt because it can be hard on our heart and raise our blood pressure over time. Um, carbohydrates are really good for energy. So those are what fuel our brain as well as our body. Um, and most importantly, we look at the sugar down here, right? And specifically, Samantha's gonna go through this with you. But you want to look at the added sugar in your beverage and cut back on how much added sugar you're consuming and get more of that natural sugar from eating a whole apple like we were talking about before. Protein is the last one of these highlighted things. And protein, of course, is what makes our muscles stronger. It helps them grow and repair. So protein is really good for an active person. 
And then at the bottom, it lists the amount of vitamins, vitamin A, vitamin C, calcium, and iron. These are things we were just talking about, right? So in just a minute, Samantha's gonna join you and you'll do a um, look at labels on beverages that um, consider how much sugar is them in them and kind of do a side-by-side -side comparison to see which one you think is healthiest. All right, over to you, Sam. <laughs> So today's activity is all about finding how many teaspoons of sugar am I drinking in my drinks. I have four examples here to show you. We have a frappuccino, Gatorade, orange juice, and monster energy drink. If you want to find something at home, feel free to pause this video now and find um, a drink, some sugar, a cup, and a teaspoon measure. And um, once you're back, we'll get started. Okay, so I have all my drinks laid out here. I want you to guess for me which one you think of all of these has the most sugar in it. And when I say how much sugar in is, the, is in these, I'm talking about the whole container. So I'm thinking drinking this whole thing of orange juice, drinking all of this monster. Based on how much sugar is in all of these, which one has the most in it, do you think? And which one has the least amount of sugar? We're going to find out today. And if you're following along at home, feel free to do the math with me. So you'll see on this piece of paper, four grams of sugar equals one teaspoon. That means that we need to find the total amount of grams in our drink here and divide it by four. That'll give us the total number of teaspoons of sugar in our drink. So for example, First, I want to find out how many grams of sugar is in my frappuccino. So I'm going to look at the nutrition facts. We have 46 grams of sugar. If I divide that number, 46 divided by 4, I already did it beforehand with a calculator. You're also welcome to do it by hand. I find out that there is almost 12 teaspoons of sugar in my frappuccino. and 12. So this is how much sugar I'm drinking when I drink a full frappuccino. All right, let's move on to Gatorade. And 14. Okay. So far, it looks like our Gatorade is in the lead with more sugar. Let's keep going. On to our orange juice. Now you would think orange juice is just natural sugars, right? Well, it is natural sugar, but remember what Sam said about taking away that fiber? All this is is the juice of the fruit and none of the fiber. So the sugar still behaves like sugar in our bodies. It spikes up our energy and then makes us crash because we don't have the fiber to slow it down. Um, let's see how much sugar is in this. So it says 22 grams of sugar, but remember that's just for one serving. There are four servings in this container, so we have to multiply that number by four, which is 88 grams of sugar in this full container. If we divide 88 by four, we get 22 teaspoons of sugar. 22. Holy moly, look at all that sugar. So this is the amount of sugar in one full bottle of orange juice. Onto a monster energy drink. So in one can we have 54 grams of sugar. When I divide that number by four, I get about 14 teaspoons of sugar. 14. All right, let's see if you are right about your guess. So 
so in the lead we have our orange juice with the most amount of sugar. In a tie for second and third place we have Gatorade and Monster Energy Drink. And the least amount of sugar is our Frappuccino. Now remember, I'm not telling you to cut out all of your yummy drinks that you like to have, but I would say drink them in moderation. Maybe have um, one serving rather than a whole container of your Gatorade. Or better yet, even make your own healthier beverage. Um, later today, I'm going to show you how to make um, some soda water drinks um, that are healthier versions of your um, sugary drinks. Let's head over to Sam now, who is going to do a fun activity with you. Hi everyone! It's time for our activity for today's lesson, and we're going to be doing snowboarding, one of my favorite winter activities. Before we head out the door, I'm going to show you the equipment you might need and talk about how snowboarding works. Now first I wanted to talk to you about your snowboarding setup. Snowboard size depends on how tall you are, how much you weigh, um, and the stance you want to ride. I ride with my feet both facing slightly outward. You have to have snowboarding boots that go with those bindings to hold you on, of course. And your best friends right here are your snowboarding helmet and goggles. Help you see when it's uh, bright conditions out on the mountain so you don't get blinded by the snow. Keep your head safe. And then this is my bag of supplies. I have my gloves, my snowboarding jacket, an extra pair of socks, everything I might need while I'm on the mountain. All right, now we're going to talk a little bit about how your snowboard works. For me, I'm a regular footed rider. That means left foot forward. So when I face down the mountain, the front of my board is over here, back of my board is over here. And on a snowboard, the front is called the nose, the back is called the tail. My toes are facing this way, so we call this toe edge. My heels back here are on the heel edge. And the way you steer your snowboard is by flexing your front foot forward and backward as if you were like pushing down a gas pedal. When I push it forward, my toes go down, it's going to turn me toward my toes. If I push my heel down, it's going to come the other way and push me back toward my heels. Now, as I step into my snowboard, when I'm getting ready to ride down the mountain, I want my knees to be bent so I'm nice and athletic. I want the weight to be on my front foot, which is my left as I'm going down. And I'm going to just use my toe and my heel to turn the board, right? No kicking around to the back leg, just toe pressure, heel pressure, nice and calm. Relaxed upper body while the bottom is bent and moving. Upper body should just be calm and relaxed, mostly straight up and down. All right, let's go hit the slopes and see how this works. Here we are on the mountain, taking one of my first runs. I'm gonna bring you guys along and um, you'll notice some of the techniques that I taught you earlier that you should be able to see as I'm riding. All right, here we go. Well, that last run basically froze my hand off, so I'm not going to do a lot of that again. But I'm going to do one more short run with you guys, and then I'll see you back down on the mountain.
thanks for coming riding with me, everyone. I made it safely back home off the mountain. Um, the conditions were a little icy today, as you can probably hear in the videos, but still had lots of fun. Always great to get outside and have some fun in the winter, even if you don't have your own snowboard or skis. Still just getting out and sledding around like we've done in the other videos is great. And this is something you can practice with just a little slope in your backyard. So you don't need to be on top of a mountain to go snowboarding. So get out there, give it a try, have fun, and we'll see you guys again soon. Um, back to Sam. Welcome back to the Snap Ed office, everybody. And today's taste test slash recipe will be soda water drinks. Soda water is also called seltzer. And these beverages are a really fun way to get less sugar in our, in our bodies, but also a really tasty way. So all you need for this is some seltzer water, just plain, or you can get some flavored seltzer water if you want. Today I have orange juice. You can choose any juice that you want. Be creative here. A cup, a cutting board, knife, and some of your favorite fruits. Today I have a bunch of citrus fruits. I have a lime, a lemon, and two oranges. Um, one of these oranges is just a regular orange, but this one is a blood orange, and it's one of my favorite oranges. It is uh, pink slash red on the inside, and it is beautiful. So I'm going to be using the blood orange, maybe a little lemon, a little lime today. I'm feeling the citrus. Um, yeah, cool. Let's get started. So I'm going to use some orange juice, but I'm not going to go overboard because it has lots of sugar in it and not much fiber. So I'm just going to pour maybe half the amount of orange juice. And the other half is going to be a combination of my fresh fruits and my seltzer water. <laughs> and the other half of my drink is going to be the seltzer water. So we're going to pour the other half of my drink, seltzer water. Let's see. Now I want to roll my fruit so I get as much juice out of it as I can. Using my safe bridge technique. Wow, look at this. It's like a purple on the inside. So cool. Okay, so I'm gonna squeeze some of my blood orange. Whoa. You guys see that color? Look how pretty. All right, a little bit of my lemon. There's some extra pizzazz and some lime. I don't know if I want to stir this. Look how pretty it is. I think I will. I'm going to stir it up. And then I'm going to garnish it with my blood orange. I'm going to cut off a pretty little slice and just cut into part of it so that it can lay in my glass. Just like that. Et voila. Are you thinking about the type of juice you would use? There's so many combinations. Hey, and if you make your own type of drink, you can name it after yourself if you want to. Okay, I'm gonna eat this later. But let's take a taste and see how I did. Ooh, that's very yummy. I get some of that orange flavor, but again, it's not too much juice because I cut the other half with some seltzer water. It's a little bubbly because of the seltzer. And I get the fresh, yummy, bright flavor of the citrus fruit. Uh, yeah, this is really good. Well, thanks everybody for joining me and Sam in today's edition of Cooking Matters for Kids, all about smart snacking. Now we really zeroed in on sugar today. We talked about how much sugar is in our beverages. What does it look like on a nutrition label? How do we read a nutrition facts label? And we got to go on a special um, activity with Sam today. All right, well, Sam and I had lots of fun with you guys. 
and um, we'll see you next time with Cooking Matters for Kids. Be safe and well.